Greetings folks, it's Andrew from IDB here, checking out Inkcase, which is a e-ink second display for your iPhone. It's not only going to add that added functionality, it's going to be really cool, and it offers quite a bit of protection for your phone all at the same time. The Inkcase has four main kind of features to it, which would be a kind of a photo displayer, a widget or information center, an ebook reader, and a news reader. Before we get into actually checking out those features and showing you how this thing works in general, let's take a look at what's in the box and how it looks. There are several different versions of the ink case working for a different variety of iPhone models and of course with the iPhone 7 and the Plus model here, uh, it's quite a bit big of a case. It's a bit thick but it's not too thick to be an inconvenience, it's not as thick as an OtterBox or something like that. In the box, you'll find the actual case itself and a little accessory packet. The accessories really don't amount to much more than just a little information booklet to how to get started and start using your ink case, as well as an actual charger, which is really what you need to charge this guy up. As far as charging goes, you can get about five days worth of use out of a single charge. It'll connect over to your phone over Bluetooth low energy, and there's a little magnetic charging strip here on the bottom of the device. It connects magnetically, basically like MagSafe on your MacBook, but here to your case instead. Yes, it is a weird proprietary type cable that you will have to go around, but it keeps it really slim because you don't have to insert anything into that case, and it's really nice and easy to get on and off because it is magnetic, so it just kind of slips into place and comes off. If you don't have it all the way on there though, it is a little bit finicky, so you need to make sure it's all the way in place or it won't really stay on there. Now, of course, all the information on Inkcase has to come from somewhere, which is the companion app on your iPhone. First off, it has that cool animation when you pull from the top. I haven't seen that one before, so kind of neat. Um, but this first panel is for reader, so you can import pretty much any ebook to your Inkcase as long as it's in the text format or EPUB. And anyone you want, you just tap on it and send to Inkcase, and it'll just transfer it over. Then we have photos. There are several ones pulled here along the top, and then you have your photo gallery or your photo album below that. So you can go through any of your photos you want and add it to Inkcase, but they don't just stop there. You don't just add a photo. It allows you to crop it in so it's the same aspect ratio as the Inkcase, make that bigger or smaller. And of course, there's tons of filters and other editing options. You can even add text to this if you wanted. So if you have like a motto or something you want to put along the top, you can do that. You can invert things, reverse things, flip it around. Lots of small editing you can do here. Obviously, you're not going to edit your photos in the Inkcase application, but it is a good little way to get some changes done before putting it onto your Inkcase because otherwise you're just kind of stuck with what it is. Of course, you can send the ink case, send as the power off image, so when you're turning it off, it'll go to that and it'll stay that on the screen, so that way when it dies or you turn it off, you'll still have your image on that display. Next up, we have Read Later, which works with Pocket, so if you use Pocket, you can go ahead and add on that. But there's also daily news. So this is kind of a beta feature that they're trying out, but daily news allows you to point a bunch of news articles and see the ones you want and automatically send them over to Inkcase. Now this is nice because when you want to read these later, you don't have to read them on your iPhone screen. You can read them on a nice uh, high contrast e-ink display. Uh, and they're also just ready to go. You just go through them and delete them on your phone or your ink case when you're done with them. And lastly, we have widgets. There is a ton to choose from here. You can see we have these kind of basic ones at the front that have things like weather, time, notification, or not notifications, unfortunately, but uh, reminders and upcoming calendars. There's tons of different versions of these that pull in different stuff like your activity that you've had throughout the day, the reminders from the reminders app, uh, calendar appointments, clocks, and some of them have white backgrounds, some of them have dark backgrounds. When you want one, you just tap on it, but you are only allowed to choose three at a time. So I would have to go back to the beginning here and uncheck these first three before making a new selection, but I kind of like this darker background. So we're gonna go with these three here, and we'll show you that what they look like on the phones themselves. Uh, but once you do, you can update that widget data or any other changes you need to do. It'll just, again, send that over to Inkcase. Lastly, we have My Inkcase, which is just kind of settings you can change, such as the language and how long before it automatically powers off. You can also come in here and change things like your login for, uh, for Pocket, as well as down here at the bottom, we have Labs, which is always the first place I look for cool things. And we have things called the case selfie and that daily news. And that case selfie is actually kind of a pretty cool feature. So there's the application. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the actual device itself. Navigation is very simple. You just double tap on that circle in the center and then move left and right using the arrow keys to go through the menu to go to the different more or less applications on the Inkcase. 
So for instance, we have that reader there. And once you're in there, you can use the controls again to control whatever application you're in, like pages on an ebook or a news article. Tapping the circle once will bring up the options menu. So options menu is tapping it once, double tapping it will open up the full menu to switch apps. Build quality is pretty solid. It's made kind of, of a rubbery, hard material, uh, which is not the probably the nicest material, but it's going to offer really nice drop protection because it has a lot of protection around those corners. It also has an elevated screen, so that way when you're, if you would drop this face down, nothing's going to 100% hit that display on your iPhone. And of course, the actual screen on the back, on the ink case side of things, is a very, very strong display that's pretty much going to withstand most of the regular daily stuff that you're going to throw at it. Even drops and falls are not going to be an issue there. They've shown little videos of dropping stuff on their ink cases with not even, you know, any damage happening to it at all. And of course, along the bottom, we have the different ports and the charging port there. So you can easily get into charge your phone and get audio in and out. I will say of my few complaints of the ink case, one of them is the buttons. They're just, they're just kind of stiff to push. And I'm like, did I push it? Did I not push it? I'm not sure. So they're a little bit tough, but that's really my biggest complaint. So here we have the case selfie, which is really cool because you can use your back camera to take a selfie picture and you can see yourself on the back of your case which is awesome because then you don't have to worry about, you know, using your you know, less quality front facing camera. So really cool feature there as far as taking selfies go. Here we have our photo app. So you can see this is that photo that we were looking at earlier. I've gone ahead and sent that over to Incase. Of course, it's an e-ink display, so you got those kind of shading lines as we're looking at the, the skyline. But overall, it's a really cool way to show off your photos. We have the ebook reader, we have news, and of course, we have the widgets on the right. So if we go ahead and select one of these, like the photo app here, I can tap on the arrows to jump through all the different images they have on here. A lot of them are going to be really high contrast, just black and white photos for obvious reasons. They're going to be the ones that kind of look really awesome on here. But you can see from my kayaking picture, they still come off really nice, even if you have just any other photo on your phone. We're going to double tap that center button, tap the right area, and going on to the book reader. So they have a bunch loaded on here as far as basically how to use your e-ink reader or your ink display ink case i'll get it one day um so here's your list you can kind of go through all the different books that you have on here by default it's kind of the instruction manual which is a really smart idea because it allows you to try out and test using the ink case without actually having to know how to use it yet so really good way to test out that e or the reader here on there which i really like because it's really nice to be able to read stuff in the sun not on your iphone so if you're reading a book this is a great place to do it at similarly we have the news reader which is just what it sounds like. It allows you to read those different news articles that we saw all over our phone. And it's really nice here because if you log into Pocket, you're one of those read it later Pocket people, you can easily add stuff to your Pocket list and you can update it here to show up on your ink case. This is really handy. I love reading news articles this way. News articles, books look great on e-ink displays. I mean, that's why obviously Kindle sells just a crap ton of those. So it's really nice to be able to have some kind of that functionality here on the iPhone. Of course, it's not going to be perfect. You've got limited sources and you've got, um, you can only do certain formats on here when you're trying to get books over, but it's definitely a step in the right direction. Then we have the widgets, which is really cool. We have reminders, which will only show up if they're marked with that priority. So if you have that exclamation, two exclamation, or three exclamation point priority, you can see it here in the reminders app. And we turn our phone around and look at the in case the actual reminders that show up are only the ones that have that priority listed. So you don't want to have those entire lists, but you do want to have your high priority ones here with you. There are different layouts, obviously, that we looked at on the phone, and these are ones that kind of show a lot of stuff. So you got your weather up there, you got different forecast weather here, you get reminders, you have upcoming events that it's pulling in from your calendar, and of course there at the bottom it's got your step data, your activity info. So how many steps you've walked, how many miles, and how many floors you've gone up and down today. Of course, and then you have the clock, which is just a handy one to have for when your phone is face down, you don't have to turn it over to get to that data. And the screen itself is very, very sharp. I was very surprised at how how high quality and sharp this display was coming off. The other downsides that I see here is there's just not enough functionality and maybe that'll come more in the future. I think it'd be really cool to display like store membership cards on here, like my giant Eagle card, which is a barcode. So I can just kind of tap on that and pull it up at the store. It'd be a really, really great functionality to add to the ink case. If you want to pick one up for yourself, you can find a link below in the description. Let us know what you think down below in the comments. Give us a thumbs up and, of course, subscribe. Until next time, it's Andrew for IDB.